life got more complicated. So it dropped off the face of the planet because mm-hmm. uh, I wasn't getting paid anytime soon. Um, and I had to go reformat all the comics. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> the reformatting of the comics is the pits. Oh, is- yeah. No, I'm, I am now the, the main daycare. So I can I do the comic about three hours after she goes to sleep before I go oh, to sleep. Man. Oh, man. Um, that's a, that's so, a yeah. lot. Yeah. Ev- everything has gone to the wayside. The next book is a little late because I don't have time to edit it. It's it's all done. I just have to add all the commas. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, there's just a bunch of things that are just wrong with this year. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be honestly part of the conversation because when we deal with other people, like the main thing that they are always asking is, what do you do now when we're stuck under COVID? And I think the other thing is we all don't really know how long this will last. Like it could be over soon, but that seems unlikely. So are we going to spend another year like this? And if we do, what do we all do in that situation and i think that's you know what everybody's trying to sort of plan for just in case things don't go back to normal yeah Bill, do you have school age kids no my, my daughters are 28 and 32. Mm. Um, congratulations however my wife is a professor at georgia state university mm. mm-hmm. so, uh, she was able to get both of the classes that she teaches this semester online um so in fact that's been doing the past two days is teaching online we don't know if that's going to be the case in the spring semester correct she's really hoping she doesn't have to actually go face to face um because yes. we're we are in kind of semi lockdown because Living with us are my parents, and they're both going to turn ninety in mm-hmm. two months. We take so, care of my parents, so mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so same same deal. You have to be constantly cognizant constantly. of what you're bringing in. We um, are very careful in all respects. Fortunately, being a cartoonist, um, I sent out everything digitally. Everything mm-hmm. comes in. Uh, everything that comes into the house, all my materials are wiped down with our and yep. did, disinfected. So it's the routine, isn't it? Yeah, dude, I'm it's, loving curbside pickup though. I, there's yeah. some stuff I'm gonna keep doing afterwards because curbside yes. pickup. I don't have to go through the grocery store and find where uh, they're hiding the the minced garlic. Oh yes, yes please. always <laughs> under the low shelf. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we, it's a weird, a weird spot, like in with the salad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have Instacart that uh, does the Publix runs for us. And we, we, we have a routine when it comes to, to the door. I bring it in. My wife, Terry, wipes it down. I take my parents' stuff down to them. Uh, it's uh, every Monday. <laughs> yep. But I do yeah. have a question. I do have yeah, a question. Yeah. Uh, do we want to talk about web comics today? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> are we started? Are we officially? What is yes. this? It's just a hangout, right? Oh. Oh yeah, hi. My goodness, like uh, we should officially, I hope we're editing this afterwards. Are we live like anywhere? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, okay. So, well, so I'm actually fine because, because it's a journal comic, I'm finding that uh, half of my comics, I have to put a little pre-COVID sticker at the bottom because the comic just does not work for masks and yeah. lack of interaction. Mm-hmm. And then some of them, I I go ahead and slap everybody in a in a mask, and so it's this very interesting mix of, all right, well this timeline is a little wonky, mm-hmm. so so how is story t- your storytelling mm-hmm. with COVID? Well, a- in my case, I I have a different story for each of my three strips. With um, Safe Havens, the cast is on a mission to Mars, so. Everything takes place on the spaceship, and I don't even have to bring up COVID. With Kevin and Kel, I never say what the illness is that the characters are dealing with, but they're all dealing with masks and social distancing and keeping six feet, but they're all animals, so I don't say what particular 
illness is sweeping their country. For the their blessed life. Shmovich 19. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I didn't want to make it, you know, like something like rabies or something. I, I mean, I, I just never mention it. In fast track, on the other hand, um, you know, that takes place in an office. And when, it, when, every, when everything happened in March, um, and I was on a two, and I had a, and I was working two months ahead. Um, I didn't want to be doing office humor while everyone was in lockdown. So I just jettisoned two months of work um, and worked like mad to send in replacements to King where everyone was dealing with lockdown. Um, Are you, those, did you save them? You're going to save them for later? Type they'll, they'll come, they'll, they'll eventually run when everyone comes back into the office. So they haven't gone anywhere. So, so I'll have a little vacation when that happens. But yeah, March and April was interesting for me. <laughs> Should we introduce ourselves seeing as... That might be a great idea. Yeah. Because oh. we're, we're going, we're six minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows who we are. What yeah. structure? Yeah. <laughs> We've all, all been right. working at home. Maybe ain't no structure. Okay, so... Uh, we'll just start because I guess we're on the left here, so <laughs> left to right. It, it's or different from to our screens. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. yeah. Like for me, you're you're like you're like down there. Oh. And I poked, and then there's Bill, and wait, there's. Anyway, sorry. See, Continue. standards. Right. No standards. Well, uh, anyways, <laughs> I'm Comfort Love, and I'm Adam Withers, and we are the husband and wife action faction responsible for the self-published comic series The Uniques and Rainbow in the Dark. We also did a big how-to book called The Complete Guide to Self-Publishing Comics. Woo. Yay. Yay! Our lives. Yep. We write That's together, great. we draw together, we color together, and we have self-published everything we've done except for the book about self-publishing. That, I that was kind of awesome. There you go. Okay, has, has next it, person. <laughs> I, I, have, I know, but I have a quick question since you do oh. everything together. How is, mm. is this dynamic changed at all during COVID? No, no, no. If it, if it it's wasn't only for, strengthened. If if it wasn't for not going out to the movies, nothing in our life would have changed. Although a lot of other like former interns and stuff have like excess time, and so they're like, "Would you teach me other things?" I was like, "Well, if you work on the comic, we'll teach you these things." And they say, "Okay." So it's a lot more people just working on the book. So that's yeah, actually that's very nice. <laughs> Uh, I guess I'll go next. I'm Bill Holbrook. I uh, do On the Fast Track and Safe Havens, which are newspaper strips, but I also do Kevin and Kel, which yesterday celebrated its 25th anniversary. It debuted on September 4th, 1995. Never missed an update, So, which, which makes it the longest continually running webcomic. Woo! God! Good golly. And yes, I but couldn't do it if I didn't love doing it. You've experienced basically virtually every generation of the internet you've experienced. Pretty much. That's, I mean, when I, Kevin and Kel started on CompuServe, um, I was, I, I was selling it to the CompuServe forums for $5 a week. Um, and that, what that year was, was that? First, 1995 that was that was the first business model and it ended almost immediately when CompuServe changed their way they compensated their um what they called sysop the forum operators and um next i went to banner ads and i pretty much used every um business model that's ever been used for web comics, except I've never had a paywall. Never done that. That's the comics equivalent of having started as a radio show and now you're on Netflix. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot. <laughs> okay, what was the the uh, Wayne's World? The uh, you know public broadcasting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. The first Kevin and Kel strips were the um, equivalent of a community access cable show. 
Yeah, but with way more class and, and higher standards and a bigger budget, much bigger budget. Well, the well, well, the budget for Kevin and Kel was just the cost of a pen and paper, so I don't know about that. <laughs> the special effects have really, they have, they have improved tremendously. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I'm Jenny Breeden. I do the journal, daily journal comic, uh, The Devil's Panties. It started, I mean, just recently in 2001. So, oh, I mean, it's, recently. we're still getting our feet under us. We're trying to figure out formatting and, you know, get our stride on, on how the, you know, what, I don't, I don't really know what it's about yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so working that out, uh, mm. it's so weird to go back. I, uh, what was the comic? I had a comic idea and I could have sworn I used it already. And so I went back about three years to see if I had used it around the time that I had taken a note for it. And I was like, wow, I used to be good. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so I, I posted this on Twitter and somebody else was like, you go back and read your old stuff and you're far enough away from it that you can finally see it. And yes. so you, you're not as judgmental about it. And so the mm -hmm. stuff you're doing now, you can't, you're like, oh, this is crap, this is crap. But all my old stuff was good. So when I when I posted that I used to be good, people were like, no, no, you're good, you're good. I was like, no, no, you don't understand. This is a, a distance thing. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting. It's a little depressing when you go back and look at stuff from 10 years ago and you're like, oh, I used to be good. Have I gotten worse? <laughs> and you don't know for another 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a, an artist, a painter, who did all of the fantasy covers ever. And he said that the more you learn, the more you realize you have to learn. Yeah. That Correct. when you're starting at the bottom, you go, you look at, you look at a masterpiece and you go, I can do that. And the more you learn about painting and, and the masters, the more you see how they are masters the more you can see the the light and the shadow and the and the more you're like oh i su oh i suck harder oh i suck worse oh. so the well, better that, you get the worse you feel that dovetails with uh something that i recently read about how uh your as an artist you're training both your technical skill but also your eyes and your ability to see and to uh perceive what should be done right so there are points, those curves don't operate at the same scale. Sometimes your technical skill will be much higher than your ability to gauge quality visually. So you'll think you're amazing because you're drawing better than your eyes can understand. But then your eyes get better at seeing and understanding quality. And those are the periods where like, God, my art sucks because you can't draw as well as you can critique. And so every now and then, your ability to critique and your ability to create meet up, and those are the comfortable periods. But right. everybody, it's it's this constant sort of sine wave pattern of two trains passing in the night between. Uh, every artist goes through this, but we don't necessarily don't have the ability that. to understand that that's what's happening to us. Right. Yeah, you, have... you, don't want to, you want to try to always be trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but so you it, can't always tell whether it's working, you know, mm -hmm. or you grossly overestimate how much it's working because your eyes haven't caught up yet. <laughs> and and in our industry, like when I, I went to school for uh, uh, comics and when I was getting close to graduation, I realized that the jobs that I was going to be trying to get, I was in competition with my professors mm. for those jobs. And, mm -hmm. and you start looking around and sometimes you see people who are amazing artists who are struggling to make a living at it. And you go, if they can't do it, then I can't, you know, how, what, what chance do I have? Right. Or you see somebody who, in your opinion, sucks, who is like, who everyone is, you know, who is making a million dollars and who is big old, you know, rock star. Mm -hmm. And you're just going, the world is unfair. Um, so, so yeah, there's this, uh, imposter syndrome and also just this roller coaster ride throughout the yeah. day of flipping tables. Yeah. Agreed. Um, web comics. Yay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask do we have a set of questions that are going to be asked or are we just sort of guiding the just conversation? Rambling. Did we I lose Scott? Person. Scott to, did, did Scott leave? I think Scott I think left. So. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Okay. We I see an icon, but. Yeah. Did you, Scott, did you lose your uh, video? 
or he just walked away and let us ramble. I feel like we. Uh, well, you know what we can do is we can think of the things that people would really want to hear right now, and I don't know how connected you guys are to you know other people, but we've got a lot of young people. We do Twitch all the time, and so we're talking to other artists and stuff there. Uh, we could talk to. Uh, things that people might be worried about or questions that might be going on we think are going on right now you know we don't have an audience usually this is just a giant q and a but we don't right. have an audience right now so we have well, to get well, i mean we you guys can see the comment section there's an audience oh <laughs> all right <laughs> there's all the people um all right now when you well, say then. you're on twitch uh mm -hmm. because twitch is a, a video hosting or whatever it is um are you doing like panels and stuff on Twitch? What are you doing yes. on Twitch? Uh, uh, we're doing live drawing stuff. Uh, we're doing panels. We're doing right. director commentaries for a comic. We're doing a okay. whole lot of things on Twitch. So, you know, uh, we do through Patreon, like uh, special panels that the audience on or the supporters on Patreon vote on every month yeah so they like, suggest topics and then vote on what exactly they want what was the last about. one we did um, motivation self-motivation yeah. yeah whole panel on that because it was a really important thing that you know everybody's experienced right now during covid uh but every single month is a new panel but other than that we're always streaming every tuesday and thursday night from 10 to midnight and that just allows people to be there with us talk about whatever, ask questions. And it honestly uh, lightens the load on the amount of uh, messages we have to deal with every week from random fans. It's true. It's just so much easier. You know, you can ask a question and it takes like five seconds to jot it out and send out a question. But that simple question can be very complicated to answer. Right. So it can it's a take lot hours to for us to talk. answer it. But verbally, yeah. not so bad. Now, I wanted to get into videos, but I didn't think anyone would be really interested in me. So I used the um, Adobe Character Animator to create monthly videos starring my fast track character, Daphne. And um, that involved getting a, a voice actress to do the voice oh, wow. of Daphne. So I, um, I, I found. Um, a woman named Amy Sweeney, who is brilliant, and she just nailed Daphne uh, brilliantly, and she's been doing her for almost three years now. Um, every month we do a two-minute animation and um, post it on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. Yes. I uh, sorry, I didn't want to for a while. Uh, my oh. browser actually, yeah, my browser crashed. So. Oh, okay. Welcome back. You know what? We're all getting used to this. <laughs> uh, honestly, just even speaking of Twitch, we're going to do our Let's Build a Team panel on Twitch at 7 o'clock on Sunday night. For Dragon Con. For Dragon Con, correct. So I was trying to find Dragon Con's uh, programming. And all I could find were the three channels of, um, oh no, I can't talk to my mom right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could talk to my mom right now, it would be hilarious. Um, uh, I could only find the DragonCon TV, the main programming and the fan track. I couldn't find any of this. So so Comfort and Adam, what uh, are you listed on DragonCon? I don't know where we're sure. listed. I know that it's all there. Generally, the comic and pop art track is through the uh, comic and pop art, Dragon Con comic and pop art Facebook page. Like, that's where they're talking about it. And that's why we're doing it on Twitch, because it's just a lot easier to have other Link people to come rather. right rather than pre record or something like that. Hmm. So there, I mean, there's this giant master schedule of yep. the three channels and what they have each hour. And then at the at the bottom of that document, that master document is a is a link that 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 goes to all the other live programming that's not on the three channels. And so okay. finding that document, that's that's the other document where you can find what all the all the uh, track directors are basically doing, kind of on their own. 
but everybody's a little bit on their own for that outside of the three channels this year. And that, that is basically explaining kind of what we're doing. And I think we'll, we'll take a good look at what happened this year and decide what worked and what didn't. So yep. if we have to be stuck in this situation for 2021, we'll be ready next time. <laughs> So what have you guys been seeing uh, in your audiences over this past year? Uh, have there been any changes in the uh, interactions that you've had with people or the, uh, like the audience connection with your series? Have you seen an increase in audience connection at all? Have you, like what, what has been your experience uh, putting your pieces up, putting your chapters up uh, weekly over this last year? bizarre period of time i get a lot of people just thanking me for putting stuff out there because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people just say i need this right now um i guess people because they can't go to concerts they can't go to movies it's pretty much the web and tv for most people and people want content um so I mean, I'm doing the same thing, just that I, people are thanking me more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have no idea because I am taking care of my kid until she goes to bed and then I'm going and doing the comic and posting it and then going to bed. And that's, <laughs> I don't have time to like read the comment section or I barely have time to check my email as in like, scroll through and see if there's anything mm -hmm. that's about to crash um mm -hmm. you know uh uh paying for domain names <laughs> for the past six okay. months because they haven't been paid um yeah i mean it's 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 a seesaw because um i feel like i should be working while i take care of my daughter but also i shouldn't be working while i take care of my my daughter <laughs> Well, she's very young. Like she's three. She's three. Yeah, that, that's a constant watching age. Oh, well, and watching or entertaining or, you know, and, and, and on one hand, it's really easy to say we're watching a movie. Um, but a movie is, is only an hour and a half. <laughs> like yeah. by the time I, I get the laundry done and the dishes washed and everything put away, the movie's over and I'm like, oh, I was supposed to be drawing. Um, so yeah, I'm although, you know, I'm I'm in much better shape than than friends who both parents work full time and they mm -hmm. also have a three year old at home. Mm -hmm. And and they're like, No, 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 and I'm my not daughter, eating, you have to watch my, them. Oh, yeah, daughter, just say my my yeah. youngest daughter was three when I launched Kevin and Kel. Mm. And she's of course now twenty eight and uh, we've collaborated on a graphic novel. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. She she has noticed. Uh, She's like, you know, mommy, I want to draw a comic. It's gonna be. <laughs> what I oh, would what say. Yeah. What, what I would say. What graphic novel is she is she launching? Sorry, 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 what? sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> what, Bill? Bill, what graphic novel is she launching? Do we, do we, um, sorry. The name of the graphic novel is Destiny and the Other Click. It's uh, Destiny in Middle School, um, dealing with the click system. Um, yeah. And it's going to be out in November. But uh, she and I wrote it together. Um, it was a genuine collaboration. And because uh, she knows more about middle school than I do at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we're really excited about it. Well, that's awesome. 120 pages long and um, uh, black and white uh, hardcover. Um, we'll see how it, how it looks. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, well, something that I've been thinking about, like with this year, is uh, and uh, Adam and I watch a lot of media while we work because otherwise we'll go crazy. But the thing that we're running up against is that movies and TV are starting to go away meaning that the ability for them to have created movies and tv during this time that would then entertain us in the next year or so we're running out right and so i think what that does is it gives an interesting opportunity for comics right now because 
people do need entertainment, but the general ways they would usually get entertainment is hitting pause, at least for a while. And so one of our things that we're going to be doing is trying to get more people to come in to our books, to read them, kind of with the lore of what else do you have to do? <laughs> what do you got going on? Exactly. Right now? <laughs> and and like in a fun, cute way, but it is also hits, I hope, a nerve because it's really true. What other entertainment are people going to have? And that's a real question mark. Comics. We're still here. Yeah. And especially web comics that are created by people, because if you haven't noticed, the big publishers have had a huge problem as well. DC is cutting back, Marvel is, uh, you know, even IDW and Image and stuff like that. Everyone's having a hard time. But if you've been doing this on your own the whole time and you're used to financially supporting yourself this way, you'll be generally okay during this time. Now, you'll have a whole lot that does need to be changed. Me and Adam have. We used to make 50% of our income from cons. So it's a lot to make up, but we're slowly figuring it out as time is going by. Have you applied for any uh, COVID assistance for that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We got unemployment and everything because we've been doing this full time since 2009. And they were like, well, the tax history is there. And we had savings before that because we're very careful generally about how we spend our money. So we're yeah. in a much better position than, unfortunately, a lot of other creators were coming into this so it's allowed us to survive but the real thing is again what will 2021 be like and how do we make things work when there's no unemployment that's probably going to be left and i you know when cons maybe do or do not show back up right it'll be it'll be interesting to see what cons make it through this because everyone was like was like, right. oh, I can't believe that that Dragon Con, you know, didn't didn't cancel or not. And I was like, no, 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 Dragon Con is waiting for Atlanta to let them cancel yeah, because correct. if they just cancel, there's no more Dragon Con. They don't right. get their deposits back. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, all, all the people who are just clutch the pearls, Dragon Con hasn't canceled. I was like, guys, yeah. guys, guys, you give it a minute. You want Dragon Con next year? Let me tell so, you about uh, a little something called Force Majeure. Right. Yeah, that was the same thing with the uh, National Cartoon Society um, Rubin Awards that was going to be in Kansas City back in May. Um, they had to wait for the state of Missouri to declare force majeure so that they could cancel. And they're going to they have the uh, Rubin Awards online next Saturday on the 12th. Um, I think you, everyone can dial in and see what's happening. Um, I don't think it's only for members now but um yeah that was that same situation because the ncs was on the hook for the hotels the um banquet hall and if they had to eat all that that'd be the end of the ncs right. yeah yep uh, we should also make sure that everybody who's in the chat knows that they can ask questions at any time because that's how usually sure. this works. If there's anything oh, right. Yeah. About, yep. By all means. And um, I'm guessing that Dylan's talking about Marvel and DC using right. the same publisher. Uh, Are we talking about uh, Diamond? No, that's the distributor. Oh, distri yeah, yeah, but I wasn't. Um, so in the last year since last we all came together to talk about comics on the web um what have there been any i mean mm -hmm. obviously aside from the one that we all know about have there been any major uh changes in what you've been doing what you guys have been doing to get your comic out or advertise or or draw people in or if you just found yourself trucking along the world changes but you stay consistent trucking along <laughs> yeah. I, I cut so much stuff back. I was, cause I had my kid in day, you know, we, we got daycare. And so I was like, oh, I have the whole day that I can work. And I was hitting, I was posting stuff on Reddit and I was making sure that I was reposting the comic in you know, social medias and I was trying the webtoon stuff. And, and I have been using a lot of uh, Twitter for, for writing, uh, tweeting things and then seeing what takes off and seeing what kind of dead in the water. Um, 
and then also reading through Twitter to see what's going on. I, Twitter's become my news station. I don't know if I should admit that out loud. <laughs> um, because there's just so many things that, you right. know, I follow enough uh, people around Portland that I read about it on Twitter before you, you know, as it's happening, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is sometimes horrifying. Um, yeah. I actually have a family friend in town who's been going to every po protest and he's been posting his wounds and hospital visits and yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then as soon as, you know, March and the, the daycare is shut down, you know, I, I barely get uh, a social media post uh, posted. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of cut back on advertising that kind of social media blitz that you do for your own uh you know, advertising. Um, and so it was interesting to see that Erica Moan decided not to postpone her Kickstarter because she was worried about what would happen with uh, the Postal Service. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And that scared me because I've I've got a book. I just have to finish editing it. I have to scrape out a couple more hours to finish editing it. And then I'm going to do a Kickstarter and just trust that the postal service will still be there um because uh media mail is shipping a book in media mail is two dollars mm -hmm. and shipping it fedex is thirty dollars right Correct. Uh -huh. yeah it's impossible you know when people are like yeah but do you really need the postal service i was like yes absolutely so <laughs> we were going Very to do a kickstarter ourselves in march and that's when COVID happened. So we decided, well, we're not going to do that. And at this point, we've been doing like lots of online stuff and lots of media blitz and a lot too of just having to talk to people. Like I would say on average, we end up talking to three to four people a day at times just because we don't have conventions and we don't have the ability to see people face to face. And so that does eat up a lot of time. So what we're at right now is a situation where every month we're going to have to take one week to say no social media or some social media, but no Twitch, no extra talking to people or whatever, because we have to get the work done. So we got a couple questions in the chat. Yes, we do. Uh, Casper asks, have you ever thought of an idea for a comic, gotten partway through, and then noped out of that <laughs> idea entirely very quickly? <laughs> Uh, pretty much. We, oh, go. No, that's pretty much my my life. <laughs> For us, I think uh, before we go into production, we have a very long process of talking about things and figuring out why would you, we would do it, why this is the right project, why this, why that, and so all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed before we put pencil to paper for any kind of real drawing mm -hmm. because the production of ours, because we're not, uh, we're doing full rendered color comics. And so the amount of time and effort it takes is tremendous. Yeah, so that's why we build in. We, we wouldn't start drawing anything uh, beyond like the most, rudimentary character design stuff maybe uh, unless we knew for a fact that we were going to see that idea through. Right. we would have to hit a stumbling block so ginormous really big mm -hmm. to to make us stop once we've hit full production otherwise right. we wouldn't start production it's just too much to turn that shit mm -hmm. back around again so just to save time honestly uh we're big on the pre-production yeah you know like a movie studio has years of pre-production that's the same for us if we think we're gonna do like we have a story tentatively called magical moms that we want to do that somebody else is going to draw and we're going to write but that story is probably going to take another one to two years in pre-production before it really gets fully greenlit by us to and make it a thing. Especially because we have somebody else Correct. doing the art on it, because I don't want to have somebody putting their time and effort into something if I'm not certain that it's going to see the light of day. No, I, I, mine is so fast, like the opposite of yours. <laughs> like, <laughs> like eight o'clock at night, I'm like, okay, I need something by 10. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> and I got to do it and I'll start digging through. Yeah, I've got, I've got notes and I've got audio notes and I've got, you know, I'll go through Twitter and be like, what, what tweet recently has gotten a whole lot of likes. Um, and I, and the thing is I should have noped out it. What's difficult is that when you're creating something, you know, what idea you had. And so you're building the sculpture and you are building a bear. And to you, it looks like a bear. And mm-hmm. then you finish it and you put it out there and you put it up on a pedestal and people are like, that's the weirdest dog I have ever seen. <laughs> and they're like, how do you think that's a dog? It's obviously a bear or, you know, even moose. I mean, some really, I so I'll post a comic and then the next day I'll read the comment section and people are like, what is a baby doing in a skate park? I don't get this. And I'm like, no, it's obviously a playground. It's skaters in a, oh no. Okay, yeah, that does look a skate. Oh, I should have put like some sand shovels in the sandbox. The sandbox doesn't look like a sandbox. I actually went back and wrote toddler town playground (laughs) (laughs) on a a sign just to be like, yeah. So signage on everything. Does she really want someone's fire truck? <laughs> yes. No, she was going. So today's comic is that we were, and I had to put pre COVID because we were at a playground. All playgrounds are closed right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there were two twin boys who were fighting. They had brought a fire truck and they were sibling fighting. If you've ever seen siblings fight, it is bloody. It, they <laughs> like my mom would only break us up if we drew blood type of, and, and so they get dragged off to be, you know, to be broken up. And my two-year-old at the time goes crawling over to get the fire truck. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> they will gut you. And she's like, no, no, I can take it. No, I can take it. It's fine. So, um, which she can. She is, she likes to go give other kids hugs and take them down to the mat. She's like, why are they screaming? <laughs> yeah, I have an accidental bully on my hand. Um <laughs> So that noping out, the the writing something and then noping out of it, I definitely, it's rare that I have the foresight to step back from from a script and look at it and go, oh, that wasn't what I intended. Um, I usually have it inked and everything and Obi will look over my shoulder and go, oh, no, 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 that's that's not what you meant. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't put the rioter in a Black Lives Matter hat. No. <laughs> I I did I did that and and he was like that's not what they're that's actually the opposite of their message you can't um so yeah there's there's a whole Good lot of it. oh that that was a that was a midnight redo when I when when I was the the child gets up at seven o'clock which any parent would say oh you get to sleep in which means I have to be done by midnight because that's all the sleep I'm gonna get mm-hmm. um. So that was a midnight revision that I was like, okay, okay, no, I'll go redraw it. It's fine. Um, so yeah, noping out of a script. Well, my my biggest backtrack um, happened um, when when COVID hit because I had planned for Bethany and her her fiance guy to get married on Halloween of this year. Mm. And I was thinking, well, you know, this is going to disrupt things for a while, but I'm sure by Halloween, things will be back (laughs) back to normal again. And about June, I'm saying, no, no, this isn't going to end by, by, by Halloween. So what's going to come up in the, in fast track in about two weeks is Bethany coming to the realization she's going to have to change her entire wedding to go online. And how that whole story has just com- 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 completely changed, and that's a story that, of course, will ne- I will never go back to. Because she's only got to get married once. Yeah. How right. I've, I've been to an yeah, I've been to an online uh, graduation. Have you been to any online events like weddings? Uh, oh, no, not, no, not yet. We had a couple of graduations. It was interesting. Am I? Uh, my older daughter has because her friends are getting married, um, but not us. I think, uh, what's the next so, question? Uh, the here? next question would be from Dylan. What if the title and themes of your comic are being called a copycat? Uh, in his case, uh, 
being uh, his his comic is being called a copy of uh, Steven Universe. Right. Um, I think this is directed at us because we do the Uniques, which is, which is a, a superhero, superhero story. And you're always dealing with other people being like, hey, so-and-so seems like such and such. Yeah, you and you're out. like, well, that's kind of the point for the background characters. Sometimes. But you also mm -hmm. find out how little it takes for right. an audience to assume that a character is based on somebody. Like, we had a character who was bald. And so everybody's like, oh, it's Lex Luthor. Like, <laughs> no, happens to be bald and not a great person. Not even a little bit like Lex Luthor, but they both have no hair and are Caucasian. Therefore, it's they're both, you know, it takes very, very little for people to to run off with something. Uh, one of our main characters, his power effect is white rings, concentric white circles. And people are like, oh, he's like Havoc. He's <laughs> nothing like Havoc. But concentric <laughs> white circles, that's all it takes. Right. So what you're trying to do is honestly, you just got to keep on trucking to yeah. some degree because everybody's going to read just about anything and be like, Hey, I think this thing is like this other thing. And you might be like, yeah, maybe I can see that. Okay. Yeah. But what you do is you keep making great books and slowly, but surely, you're helping your audience to understand why this character that you have is unique to the genre and unique to other storytelling that has come before you. Although in order to make sure that that happens, you need to start trying to head those comparisons off at the past. Correct. If you have a character or a storyline that you suspect might have some similarities, mm -hmm. find ways to you know, change one little thing or a couple little things. It doesn't take necessarily huge change to make something feel distinct, but a few small changes can add up. Uh, if you have a character that, you know, is being compared to somebody or some mm -hmm. existing character, try to find a way that you can put a chapter up that shows something in that character that would be completely out of place in the one that they're being compared to. Um, and you certainly have influences. Everybody has influences. You know, we've been influenced by right. the X-Men. We're not trying to make the X-Men, but obviously it's part There's of no our There's no way past. to get away from that. And the better you understand what your influences are, the easier it is to then try to hide those influences right. to make sure that what you're doing is distinctive from those things. Or when sometimes you do want to be making a comment on other things... You know, you can make sure that the audience knows enough about what it is that you're trying to say about said thing. Uh, but remember to make it your own personal spin. Like we had a whole like uh, division in the team that we were making. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we were planning to do a storyline where the team was arguing about whether or not to become licensed as heroes. And then this little thing called Civil War came out. And suddenly we have to bend over backwards to like, how do we make it different? How do we make it so that ours is separate? Because it's crucial to understanding right. how our world works. Just taking it out right. wouldn't have made but sense. But also you can make comments about that other thing to sure. some degree with your work. And but you have to be clever about people it. People actually really like that yes. because if they think it's an Easter egg, then they feel smart for getting it, right? <laughs> that reference i'm smart you're a great comic because you made me feel like i'm in the know thanks for the easter egg there's an awful lot of movies and television that are not very good but get a lot of fan support because of having right. easter eggs in them so if you can make some sly references to stuff that can be okay sometimes it's better to lampshade it than to pretend it's not right. there at all right I've I've had uh, I've been accused of stealing, and I've had to call my fans off from uh, that. I I had a lady email me, and she was like, "Hey, your comic's really cute and everything. Haven't heard of you before, but uh, could you tell your fans to stop sending hate mail?" Um, oh, no. She had wrote a she wrote a blog about you know how much work it takes to put on the little black dress, and I had like a week ago done a comic about how much you have to put on to wear the you have to wear the you know, socks under the fishnets and socks over the fishnets. And you have to put a whole bunch of stuff on and make the little black dress look good. And so I was like, no, I wasn't the first one to come up with the concept that a little mm -hmm. black dress is uncomfortable. Correct. Um, yep. And then I had 
I did a in my Gibis comic I did where you know a, a chaos portal opened up and I was bored so I jumped into it and I have one tentacle arm and somebody was like oh that's from like one of the major comics that I had never read before I was like no chaos and a tentacle arm is kind of logical um, and then I was at a I was at a convention uh, doing a, I did an interview with somebody and I don't remember the concept of convention bingo coming up. But I had gotten cards of convention bingo from uh, the, way back in the day. They were called American Comics. And I stole convention bingo from them. And I started posting little, like, if you see, you know, a, a three, one of the guys from 300 cosplayers, bingo. And so I was putting together a convention bingo. And the people who interviewed me emailed me. And they were like, how dare you steal our idea from us? We can't use that anymore. And I said, no, no, no. I'm stealing from these other people. <laughs> I didn't steal from you. Yep. Well, I saw oh. convention bingo back in the 80s at the yeah. Atlanta Fantasy Not, Fair. <laughs> oh, it's a very logical convention bingo, yeah. Renaissance Festival sure. bingo. Oh, it, I did anime convention bingo. Um, and and what was... Oh, dang. I lost it. I lost it. No, it's gone. Yeah. Um, Oh, no, it was I in the back of my uh, graphic novels, I started putting cliff notes of talking about what was going on in the comic, little background details, little Easter eggs. And I went up to um, Carla Speed McNeil and in her books, she has a bunch of extra information in the back. And I said, I stole your idea. I, I, I put a bunch of, you know, information in the back of the book. And she said, oh, no, no, no I stole that from Alan Moore. <laughs> yep. I think everybody feels like, you know, it's make something completely new or bust when the reality is everybody's just reinventing the wheel in I, some way, shape or form. I blame cinema sins and TV tropes. Everybody mm. feels <laughs> like they want to hunt this stuff down. Correct. Like they're the first ones to point out like that some the things geniuses. are variations of other things. Um, it, you know, it is what it is. There isn't a new idea under the sun. Uh, right. All, as, uh, as John Lennon said, all of the songs have already been written. There's only so many chords and there's only so many ways you can put them together that are going to sound any good. So it's got less to do with how original your idea is, more to do with how original is your voice. You know, how, how original are you as a person and are you putting these ideas together in a way that can connect with people? Right. That's what matters. You know, yeah. if, if you're treading some older ground, but you're doing it in your way, fine. Don't don't worry about it. You can tear yourself in knots trying to be new. Right. All right. Do we have other questions here? Uh, how um, did we all manage? Oh, this is from Wildcat. How did you all manage to find the audience for your comic? What tactics did you use? Mm. I don't no, know. No, no, no. <laughs> how did that work yeah. in 95, Bill? Um. I don't know because I'm I'm the worst at marketing. I, I honestly don't know. I don't have the marketing gene. Um, all, all, all I did was sit at home and draw cartoons. They ended up on the internet, and people looked at them and they never left. Um, I I did not have a advertising campaign because I don't know how to do that. Um, I wish I had. I wish I did, um, but yeah, I I don't know. I in in the early two thousands, um, I would post. You know, I had people said, "Who's your target audience?" And I was like, "What does that even mean?" I'm just doing comics about myself, and then if people like it, it'll read it. They'll read it. Um, my brother turned to me and said, I don't really identify with your comic. I, I don't really think it's funny. And I was like, that's fine. You're not really supposed to identify with it. And then he came back a year later and said, yeah, but it posts every day. So I still read it every day. Um, that's the and, best thing you can do. I, yeah, no, it's, it's consistent. So, and I, I had somebody, I tell a story all the time. I had a Boston convention where um, I had two teenage girls with green hair come up and say, oh, we love your comic. I had a housewife, I had this motorcycle guy come up, and I had this this baseball, this football player come up. And he goes, really, you know, all of them said they loved the comic. It reminded them of them and their friends or them and their cousins. And this this 
football player comes up and goes, I really like your comic. It rem- reminds me of me and my dance troupe. <laughs> yeah. Target audience. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. so that's the what you had to do before the internet, which you know, I think Comfort and Adam can talk about this more of finding a publisher that fits your story or your story that fits a publisher and pitching it to the publisher and convincing them that there is an audience for it. Whereas now with the internet, you put it out there and your audience kind of finds you. I had a teenager come up to me at a convention and said, um, thank you for your comic. You make me feel like I'm not broken. And because the story yeah. isn't in mainstream. Um, and so, but trying to find your audience, you you really got to throw it out there and just see what sticks. Um, I mean, yeah, how, how do you guys think that your audience has found you? Uh, well, you know what? Let's talk about the land of web yeah, right now because doing that's the most current thing. Lately. And that's sort of where we're stuck right now because we can't do any of the other things. Well, not, I, I mean, stuck initially perhaps but I, we've found webtoon to be really successful exactly for us. we've embraced um, webtoon we've found a really good audience there mm-hmm. and part of it is knowing your material really well right um and some of it is just we've been doing this long enough that we know who our work tends to resonate with the most right you know uh, uh, we've done so many conventions for so many years and we've gotten to talk to so many people who've read our stuff that you start hearing what mm-hmm. it is that they're taking away from it you start hearing what the parts are that are making them excited. And I think right now, what's wonderful about Webtoon is that we're able to work uh, not just on our own and speak to our audience. So like every time we have an episode, actually, can you just bring up one of our episodes? Because we can share our screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, So what's wonderful about the episodes is not just are we able to, and Adam is about to share the screen, you got it? In just a second. Which one do you want to do? What are we doing? Uh, I'm looking for one that has it previously. There we go. OK. Let me drag this over. Thank you for being patient, this is everybody. Gonna be the, this is going to be the desktop version, which is unquestionably not the way that Webtoon intends you to read. How is that? Uh, you yeah, want fine, to? Fine, fine. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Yay, we're good at this. Here we are, and share. OK. It's so coming. the best thing about Webtoon is being able to talk directly to your audience. And whether or not this will share, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to start yeah, talking. Keep talking. Uh, so uh, we can have the imagery and the story within there, but we can do previously ons. We can do a whole thing at and like we've done a big fan art and fan fiction contest that just ended. Uh, you know, we could let them know, like my dad uh, has Parkinson's now and Adam's mom uh, has stage four cancer. And we could let them know that and let them know what was going on with us and with the world. And we can get their feedback on what they want to sort of see with the comet itself through their comments. One of the things that we've found really helps in building an audience Mm -hmm. is talking to your audience. Yes. And we found that our our book, our story, uh, The Uniques, is very tightly woven in its plot. Uh, Everything winds up mattering Mm -hmm. at some point in the future. And there's a lot of stuff early in the story that starts coming back later in the story. But we started finding that the audience was getting a little lost, right? Because the book is designed to be read as a graphic novel and we're formatting it for webtoons and something you read at the beginning of the issue that comes back later in the same issue on webtoon that might take seven weeks before they get to that point so it's easy to lose track of some of those little threads that would be a lot simpler to follow in book form so we started doing previously ons to like remind people of things that happened and you know what chapter they were in so that people can catch back up again. And the audience could give feedback on how they wanted the previously ons to right. be displayed yeah, and what, what they works needed. And what um, we have little soundtracks for every episode so that people can get into that and you know play the Spotify while they read if they want to. Um, we do little chats afterward. We have our uh, you know ads for our Twitch commentaries and things. We have a conversation going on with our audience at all times. 
And then in the chat, we respond to pretty much everybody, like as much as right. we as can. As much as we can, we try and we respond, respond to basically everyone. And in yeah. doing that, you Adam, are, I just just yeah. want to let you know that the the screen sharing is it's kind of jumpy. It doesn't it doesn't okay. show smooth scrolling, uh, so you have to stop every couple of seconds. Let I'm the, sorry. Let the window paint. Okay, sorry. Um, the point is that if you want to build an audience, you need to talk to that audience. You need to be available to that audience. Um, we did not, for a long time, we would put things out online and we would hope people found it. We'd talk about it on social media and we'd just sort of be crossing our fingers. But when we went on to Webtoon, we saw how Webtoon worked. They had comments built into it. We looked at some of the popular and successful mm -hmm. strips on Webtoon and saw what they were doing. And we think we figured this is a way to build community around our work and around us. In as a way creators. that was just not necessarily possible with such platforms. a long uh, series as what we have that has yeah. an interwoven mm -hmm. plot. So the first when we started putting things up on Webtoon, we got we posted onto like our Facebook, like Comfort's mm -hmm. Facebook, said, hey, could you guys please come and drop a line on our webtoon so that people can see that we're talking about it and they can be encouraged to also talk about it. Uh, once somebody starts the conversation, right. then other people, new people, feel comfortable jumping into that conversation. Right. And I think also on top of just doing the webtoon itself, you're also looking to find other people who are also on that platform and do group collabs and stuff like that. You stop sharing, yes. but like uh, we recently did like a uh, back to school uh, webtoon club that has a lot of other creators who put their characters in there and they talk about how their characters would learn or go back to school or whatever. And that yeah. way it's posted on everybody else's webtoon and everybody else. Yeah, everybody on who's it. in the right. collab posts it to their page. And so all of their readers will get to see that creator's submission to the collab, but they also see everybody else's. And so we can be introducing people to a bunch of other comics, and we're being introduced to a bunch of other audiences at the same time. Um, those kinds of collective community experiences, mm -hmm. that is the ultimate way to build an audience digitally today, I think. Find places that are making communities around comics, right. not just like silent readers. And whatever you have, figure out what the audience likes and sort of emphasize that enough. So that's their candy. And then you give them their vegetables until they like the vegetables. We saw that the most popular categories on Webtoon were romance. Uh -huh. So for our thumbnail, we picked a shot of two characters being very sweet together, right? Mm -hmm. Do something to draw people in. It's, if we didn't think that they would like the comic, we wouldn't be there. We knew that they would like our comic if they were able to find it and give it a chance and try reading it. It's just what do we have to do to convince them to click the button and stick around long enough to see whether they mm -hmm. like it or not. You think tags are a way to go as far as just trying to... If you're on Instagram, Sure. sure. Instagram works well for tags. Uh, if you do anything on Twitter, tags mm -hmm. are helpful. They're almost necessary there. Another thing with Twitter especially is, and Facebook too, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily show, in fact, they absolutely don't show your tweet to all of your followers every time that you post something. So yeah. you might need to post multiple times per day the same content to make sure everybody gets a chance to see it. Don't worry about flooding people's inboxes or whatever, because odds are they didn't see it the first three times, but they might see it the fourth. You know, the, the algorithm is designed to force you to pay money to be seen. So you kind of have to flood the system a little bit to make sure that everybody who does follow you gets the benefit of following. Yeah, no, and, I, and I think a lot of people use use tags in that way. They follow a certain tag mm, yeah. um, to kind of to get, get, oh, I'm interested in this thing. Um, I had somebody who once was like, why doesn't your, your older comics have tags? It's like, because cat tags didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to go back and tag 5,000 comics. Yeah. Um, Slacker. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, my God. Such a... <laughs> <laughs> Bill, oh, Bill, Bill, you can call every you. Yes, you have that. 
Yeah, yeah well, you're I'll allowed never, to call everybody smacker. I won't be telling people to put tags on 5,000 strips. <laughs> That's I. Somebody earlier was like, I need an, you know, I need to get an intern. I was like, yeah, that that would take work to actually find the intern. <laughs> yeah. Right now, all I I only have time to draw the comic. That's that's it. Hey, here's something you don't get in the in-person Dragon Con experience. Yeah. I yep. saw the cat pedestal. I was hoping the cat would show up. Yeah. We yeah, have, I think I, I'm not the only one who's been watching the cat in the background. And we have many, <laughs> so she might not be. How the many first is many? The last five. five. Oh, Don't let them outnumber the humans. That's well, dangerous. We have Comfort's parents live with us, so there's four of okay. us and five of them. We're okay. And that's that's fine. That's fine. We're I, all right. Two, two to five. Five on two is. Mm. It is a. Mm -hmm. It's a cat pile. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I had should to go to lady. We did get another question in the chat. Here's the question. Oh, interacting with your audience. Um, Very yes. Important. Yes. Yeah, I, I think. A hundred percent. I mean, we yeah. found it to be really yeah. beneficial for us. Yeah. You know, when I was saying that I didn't know how to market myself, that's, that's true. It's audience interaction that is my marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, I just replying mm -hmm. to every email that someone sends to me, uh, every comment that's on social media, that's a question. Um, I, I'll, if someone's going to take the time to ask a question of me, I will at least give them a response. Correct. It's, it's amazing how far you can go by just being a decent human being. Mm -hmm. I'm always amazed when people like me at conventions, I'm just so happy to talk to somebody um, that I don't let them leave the table. And I get people who are like, oh, yeah, I met Jenny at such and such convention and she's so nice. I was like, I was bored and you were there. Um, and so you I kind of I'm I'm nervous about like. People think that we're really nice, and I'm like, who have you been meeting? What have they been doing <laughs> to you? I seem nice to you. Who hurt Whoa. you? <laughs> um, so just just as far as uh, uh, now, okay, okay, I can think of a couple of situations where somebody tried to respond as a normal human being to criticism, and that is something you don't do. Keeping your mouth shut is is a valuable skill. Uh, my my dad turned to my mom once and said, it doesn't hurt you not to say anything. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it hurts so bad. Um, but you have to. So so the fan interaction, I think, is it's good for my soul. I love interacting with fans just so I can because you post something up on the Internet and it just goes into the void. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So having that feedback is wonderful and and interacting with your fans to a point. Because there's definitely the way you handle criticism. <laughs> my yep. Well, and Bill was talking about it in terms of uh, marketing and the best advertising bar none that you can have is word of mouth. And the only way to build that is to get an excited audience, to get people who are so are such fans of your work and who enjoy your work so much that they want to tell everybody mm -hmm. they know they'll about be it. your bullhorns yeah 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 you know make them feel a lot on. yeah and really it's they don't people don't necessarily even want to be fans of a thing right now they want to be fans of you as a creator you know you're who they want to connect with and if they feel like there's a bond with between the creator and the audience then that makes it that much more special to them. All right. I think we're set with our comments and stuff like that, and we can probably start wrapping things up. I don't know. I don't know how long this is supposed to go. Well, yeah, we've got 10 more minutes before I have oh, to, okay. I have to well, shut it Well, we can fill that space. Yeah, we can. <laughs> I mean, we could well, just bring a mountain of cats here, and what? What's what, what's something that um, we all want to promote? Some book that's coming out. Uh, well, we are continuing work. We're uh, on to season two of yep. Uniques, which just is, feels started very good. 
season two just launched. We can iTunes. put links in the that's comments true. here. Oh my goodness. That's wonderful. Oh, oh you can. Oh. Yes. Hold on. Get this. Everybody get a link. Yeah. Fantastic. So we just started season two. Season of two the of the Uniques just launched on Webtoon. Uh, it's free to read there. We have physical copies for sale through our website or Amazon. All right. Um, and then give a link to Patreon sure. because that is basically the way a lot of us as artists are making money these days is Patreon. That's right. How we pay our mortgage, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, and on through Patreon, we do uh, monthly drawings for the for the followers there, and they get to vote on tell us what to do. Tell right, us what and, to do, and they get to win the original art. And yes. stuff. Yeah. Amongst many other things, teaching Ooh. and what have you. So Patreon, we love it. It's another full time job, but we dig it. But hey, I'd, I'd yep. rather be doing Patreon than an awful lot of other things that we could have to Correct. do instead. So who else has stuff? Well, I just posted a link to the graphic novel that I mentioned earlier. Um, again, this is about my Daphne character and her adventures in middle school when she was 12 years old. And um, she, she attends this school that has a regimented click system. As soon as you enroll, you are assigned a click and a lunchroom table. Of course, she's getting, she is put into the goth click mm. and finally there's only one person there and she's not goth. It's going to be awkward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jenny? I think we're not hearing you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry, Jenny. Uh well oh. Jenny <laughs> Check it yeah, out. That was the problem I was having when I first logged on. Yeah. Uh well Jenny is um oh. trying to get her stuff done. Uh the question is with Patreon, what is a usual type of income via Patreon? Compared to advertising kind of... or other income right, right, right. streams. Um I think that varies a lot from person to person. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's a standard. I will no. say that uh, it is worth delaying a Patreon until you have built an audience that can actually Right, you cannot, one. don't start a Patreon like, I just started my comic and yeah. now the Patreon. You it's don't have soon. enough people who are going to get onto the Patreon. It takes years, I think, of work. Like, we have been doing this full time since 2009. Yeah. That's a long time now, 11 years. This would have yeah. been our 10th year at Dragon Con. So, uh, you know, and we've been doing Patreon for what, the last three years now, something, something like that. that. So, so not quite three years. Right. So it took a long time to really feel comfortable to do a Patreon. You can do it. Maybe we waited a little bit longer, longer than, than we, we should have. Yeah. But I think you need to really know that you can back this up. That you have enough people to back it up. Because right. Patreon, like Kickstarter... Nothing succeeds like success. Mm -hmm. If people come to your Patreon and they do see that there's like nobody there, like the number of patrons is right. in the single digits, it doesn't feel like a hop in place. And that sort of depresses your overall mm -hmm. numbers. Um, so it's, it's worth giving it a little bit of time. Patreon is definitely a place you should be like headed towards. The nice thing about Patreon mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, advertising or other income streams mm -hmm. is it is kind of passive in that we're not, for the most part, we tried to design our Patreon so that we're not doing a lot of things for Patreon we wouldn't be doing anyway. It's just that we have a place to share that now. So people who want to be inside the process more can see some mm -hmm. of that stuff. Well, and two, they get to choose a lot of things. Yeah. Like they get to choose that drawing that, you know, we do two drawings a month for it. They get to choose. And there's a lot of times where right. we would be doing that stuff anyway, mm -hmm. but now instead of us having to figure out for ourselves what we do, right. we're just like, hey, what do you want to see us We draw would this write time? panels anyways. 
but they get to choose yeah. what we teach. Yeah. You know, uh, there are, can be other things that are more fancy, like, you know, we do private lessons and stuff like that on Patreon mm -hmm. every month. Uh, we do sketch commissions for people now exclusively through Patreon. So if people want sketches, they have to be a part of the Patreon first. And that also helps us make sure that we don't have an overwhelming amount of sketches. You know, it helps laser focus everything. Yeah, I'm I have sorry, a... his earbuds died. All right, what were you going to say, Scott? Oh, I, I would say, say that I have a patron program with Kevin and Kel, which pretty much supports the strip. Uh, same deal, but it's not on Patreon. It started in 2001, so it predates Patreon. Uh, but I'm still doing it on my own um, with, a, you, with the same kind of deal where people do can contribute at diff, di different levels and get different goodies at different levels. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at Kevin and Kel today, you'll see a patron of the strip making a appearance in the strip. Uh, uh, a, yep. here, let me put on, get the link, kevinandkel.com. I'm going to get another kitty here. Oh, more cats. Okay, come here. Uh, Jenny says you need uh, 100 true fans, people who will buy your, all your stuff for Patreon to make a couple of hundred dollars, maybe? Uh, that would be pretty on. typical. Give them different levels to contribute. They'll be, most people will give a few dollars. There'll be that one person who contribute a bunch. There are some people who like spending a lot of money on people, and you want to allow them to do so. There are also people just with bigger incomes. Yeah. It doesn't matter to, to some them. people. You know, fifty dollars a month for somebody's Patreon is the same amount as you or I spending a couple dollars a month. Yeah. There's, has Patreon been been affected by the pandemic? Um, I'm going to find out in about two months. That's when I launched my new patron program. Uh, Jenny is making some excellent points in the chat. Please read her. She's a delightful writer. And she knows what she's talking about. And it's true. Uh, did we say most patrons? Yeah, that most yeah, patrons we... just want to support the artists. Yeah, that's yeah. why they're there. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily need. Uh, this is something we found firsthand. We used to do a lot more for our Patreon. Honestly, when we started, we were like, we got to work and work and work to make this worth it. But the patrons were happy. You know, they didn't need us to like slay ourselves bending over backwards they just wanted to see what right. we were doing anyway. and honestly we do a lot more than many people do, yeah so we still do yeah. pretty pleased so uh jenny mentioned ko-fi what's that i don't know i don't know i'm sorry jenny Oh, it's, it's like patron, but oh, newer. Oh, it's a long oh. version thing. Okay. Oh, oh, I see. Coffee donation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Coffee. Got it. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, uh, thank huh. you for the link. It. We all appreciate it. Okay. Um, I did want to uh, put this out there. Uh, when I have to shut down the room, the, the chat will shut down. But if you want to continue the conversation, I didn't talk to any of you about this beforehand, but if you wanted to hang out on Discord, I'll post the link to the uh, uh, instructions for Discord. There's a couple of steps you have to go through. A little bit of a little bit of up on the Discord. I think we are. Yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to drop out by it, uh, in our channel, the uh, the EFF track discuss and and hang out there. We we'd love for that to happen. So well, I'll be I'll be getting back to my scripts right here. <laughs> uh, we will feed our cats, but I will try and get back onto the uh, discussion in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Yes. Thanks. Uh, I guess we'll uh, need to start wrapping things up. We can. Uh, here we we got uh, the sign here. Yeah. Woo!
All right. Well, thank you so much for having us, you guys. And thanks for all the questions, everyone. This I hope is next year in Patrick. person. Yes, yes, we all hope next, next year, year in God person. Willing, in not, a, not another <laughs> repeat yes. of this year. Thank yeah. you very much. But hey, we um, didn't miss a year. We didn't right. miss a year. And you right. know what? If by any stretch of the imagination we have to do this next year, we'll be really we'll be good better. at it. Exactly. Yes. That's the Practice. silver lining. Next year we'll have like special effects and green screening and stuff. Oh yeah. It's gonna be crazy. Jenny's gonna have like a mic that works for the entire time. Bill's gonna be like gigantic, just <laughs> to take through town. It's gonna be amazing. Tune in next year. Mm -hmm. Next year. Yeah, thanks. Wow. thanks to thanks to the audience. Uh, yeah, I, I actually showed uh, Jenny the green screen, but uh, yeah, th thanks to the audience for uh, keeping things uh, going and, and throwing the questions in in the comments. We like that a lot. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, good night to you all, and see you in the chats. Bye bye. We'll see you, and thanks so much.